I don't know. I don't know how to find the most find the most complex names. Mm, what would I be? Oh. 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 Vagabundo oh. dos Hobo Cuatro Cinco. Oh. Hello, everyone. Yes, welcome back to another show of the Hobo and Girlfriend. I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. Don't worry about me like this. There we go. That's a little bit better. Not as funky. So I'm here to talk probably about the last TV show of NXT I'm watching, mainly because of the fact that AEW is going to be on Wednesday night next month. Actually, next week. Now that I'm looking over there at my calendar. So, oh, I have to cross that off too, because I did that. This. Well, I will do that, so that's close enough. Video I'm doing now, did that. Whoa, I got stuff to entail. And I got a birthday gift, too. That's pretty cool. Oh, I got a booze. As a hobo, I always need more booze. So, but I'm here to talk about some NXT, and probably the last time I'll be reviewing a TV show of NXT. And AEW is coming on Wednesday night. I'm not going to watch both. I'm just going to watch one. I'm going to watch AEW since it's new and different. Then I think... Is it next week? Yeah, it is next week. Or I switch to my different schedule. And I, I've already made that major announcement. Where it'll be Monday Raw, Tuesday Impact, Wednesday AEW. Thursday's got a kind of weird, funky show. Sometimes, sometimes I just say, I'm done. Friday's going to be, I have to make a red wine and pizza smackdown. The, the, yeah, the red wine and pizza smackdown. That sounds pretty good. Wait a second. That should be an easy thing to make. Uh, Saturday is just reserved for whatever, how shall I go to, or random pay-per-view. And Sunday's still reserved just for WWE pay-per-views. That's pretty cool. With the exception of Wrestle Kingdom. So that's on like Sunday. No, that's on Saturday. Uh, it might as well be Sunday. Like Sunday at 3 in the freaking morning. Time difference. But let's talk about some NXT. So this was an interesting show. Not as good as last week's TV stuff. Uh, starts off with uh, Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic. And I feel so bad for Nigel. He couldn't pronounce Dominic Dijakovic's last name. Save his life. He came up with something new every time. Kind of like I do with El Vagabundo Cuatro Cinco Hobo. And I'll tell you what. One reason why I'm not going to watch NXT on TV anymore. Moral is way too much. Get off the Coke. Get off the Coke, Moral. No more Coke game. Just, just, and, and no more Red Bull, Moral. Have to tranquilo off that stuff. He's way too much. Um, Dominic Dijakovic comes out. I like the fact that they do the tail of the tape. I wonder if AEW is going to do that. I wonder if that's going to give it kind of that big fight feel. Because that was actually pretty neat. It made it feel like a sport event. Which I know they're going to push for probably more so on Fox than USA. But this, they're, they're probably just beta testing stuff. Trying to see what actually works. Um, yeah, fun stuff. Beast your eyes. Or however he does that. I still don't know why he's just not what was it? Donovan Dijak is so much simpler to say. Even if it was just Steve Dijak. So much simpler to say. Dominic Dijakovic. Please. Um it was a fun it was a fun match though. Um <laughs> Keith Lee almost pounced. Poor Dominic out of the ring. That was awesome. Uh, he did that nasty slam, too. 
I'll tell you what, uh, I'll lead to that twisting over the top rope thing. And those headbutts, ooh, bubble Brazilic, that was pretty cool. Uh, Keith Lee, he did the moonsault, he couldn't get that. And I'm like, wait a second. Keith Lee did the moonsault on me. I'd be dead. Why is it Dijakovic kicking out of that? And then Dijakovic hit a top rope Canadian destroyer, and Keith Lee, j Keith Lee kicked out of that. And I'm like, wait a second. That's a top rope Canadian destroyer? No one kicks out of that. I guess Keith Lee does, though. Oh, bask in his glory. Oh, bask in his glory. Very PWG-ish, though. Once they start doing spot fest and kickouts, then he hits that big bang thing on Dijakovic, and finally the match is... There's, there's a pinfall. I don't know. I was... I enjoyed PWG matches when it's a spot fest, but not when they're kicking out of really what would be a killer move, a freaking death finisher. So, with that being said, I'll tell you what, it was still fun, though. Don't get me wrong, it was still fun. This was a good quality cheeseburger match. Aura is too much. If I have to listen to that every night or every Wednesday night, I think whoever they have, Tony Schiavone will probably call it a little calmer. He'll, he'll, he'll pop for the big spots, but not every spot's a big spot, Moro. Tranquilo. No more Red Bull. The next match was oh, they had a preview of Regal laying down the law. That was kind of cool. And it was a returning Dakota Kai. Was that Dakota Kai? I don't know. Versus Tanara Conti. They have two names. Tanara's. Yeah, that's okay, but Conti. Tanara Conti makes more sense. I don't know. I'll tell you what. It was an okay match. Dakota Kai looked like she aged 10 years, though. She doesn't look... How old is Dakota Kai, anyway? Whatever it is, she doesn't... Why do I think she was only, like, 24? But she doesn't... She still looks 34 now. I don't think that all-white look helped her out any, really. It looked like she was wearing underwear. She forgot her ring gear and just said, well... I have my undies. And it just... The Kodaka is still cute and amazing. And if she gave me a boat, I'd still probably marry her. And if she told me to do stuff, I'd still probably do stuff. But, I don't know. Old Dakota Kai wearing flower print was just cute. This Dakota Kai... <laughs> She's more mature looking. But that white doesn't help her out, though. No. She has to go back to the flower print. Hopefully she just lost her stuff. Um, Conti, she got her kicks in. She got kicked in the face. I know Dakota Kai is the uh, team kick person. I forget who else is on the team kick, though. Was it Nixon Newell? Or, oh... Her new name. I forget now. Tyga Knox or something? She'll always be next to Newell to me. The girl with the shiniest wizard. I have a photo of her. Let's see, do I still have that on my cell phone? And I've probably told that story a thousand times. Middle. My sister asked me stupid. See, do I still have no work cell phone? Cell phone work. Do what I want you to do, not what you want to do. Let's see, 
No. Here, it's here somewhere. I hope maybe it's her. her. Yes! Nixon Newell. Tegan Knox. That's okay. That's Nixon Newell with Hobo Tom. The girl with a Chinese wizard and, and a hobo. Can I, I that's, that's my favorite picture. I embarrass the heck out of her when I'm like, you're Nixon Newell. You're the girl with the Chinese wizard. You're with the... You want, you, you want the WCPW Women's title? She's like, how do you know? I see you on, I see you on YouTube. It was awesome. Yeah, you're the best. As Kai Sono, Chris Harris, like laughing. And then, uh, what's her face? Rena Gonzalez is like, what the hell's going on? But uh, this match was okay. Um, Dakota Kai's thing is that she just kicks people. I don't know. I'll tell you what, it wasn't bad. It was good to see Dakota Kai come back. She did have a matching knee brace up. She had an all white knee brace, so at least her outfit matched. Who knows? Maybe that maybe that was done for a reason. I have no idea. But overall, meh. A ham sandwich. And that's because Nick's new and I could have had the same quality match in that ring. Even though I have only I only have two clues on what I'm doing. My move, headlock, take over. Then leave it loose and say, I am the master of the headlock. Then it's the, the bite, the groin kick. Pile driver could do. The body slam. Clothesline. Chops. Leg kicks, arm bars, knee bars, noodle lock. Oh, wow. I could actually probably do a lot. I don't know how I put it together, though. It would be ugly looking. Then for the main event for the televised period, because remember, Suits is still on, folks, was Matt Riddle. Nigel just has a terrible time with these names. Like Matt Whittle, he called him, and, and, and White L, and I don't know. Versus Killian Dane. I was surprised because this was a street fight. And for the most part of the match, it was a really technical match. Until they go outside. And there were finally chair shots. Yay, chair shots. And then he got speared through the wall. And you could tell, because they were brawling. And I'm like, why is that gloss black? And that huge square section. Flat black that looks like painted cardboard? Is something going to happen? Yes, indeed, something happened. Matt Riddle got speared through the wall. And I'm like, wow, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, right. So then they kind of brawled a little bit more on the outside. Uh, Killian Dane did hit three Vader bombs. Three Vader bombs should kill anyone. If he had a Vader bomb, me, I'd probably be coughing up blood legit. Uh, and Matt Riddell doesn't, which is amazing somehow. And then it's just like there's no selling in NXT anymore. Even, I don't know, I want to see the ridiculous sells too. At least it's like, oh, wow. But now it's like just a total no sell. Terrible. Uh, it's And it might just be the wrestlers, but it's beginning to feel a lot like pro wrestling gorilla. Not necessarily a good thing. I forget when the BOLA is this year. We might have had it already. Okay, you can always email me or leave a comment saying, BOLA was last week, you you hobo. You don't know you're wrestling. I don't know. I should find out when, when the Battle of Los Angeles is. That's always a big thing. And that's what it feels like. The first street fight was actually better. It felt like a street fight. They were in the street fighting. And then there were people fighting. And people fighting people. And people from the locker room fighting people. That's a street fight. This was just a wrestling match that happened to take place on the outside of the ring. And they could use weapons. It's just an Extreme Rules match. Not a street fight. Killian Dan also wears jeans. That's the proper outfit to wear in a street fight. You don't show up to a street fight in trunks. If I was in a street fight, I'd be in jeans, a jean jacket, 
my my motorcycle boots, a t-shirt, and probably a hat. That's a street fight. Not showing up in flip-flops and swimwear for all intents and purposes. I don't know. But this match was fun, though. Again, just not as good as the first one. But still, it was fun, though. And this was a cheeseburger match. Then we get to the really quick part of NXT, because these were all unaired matches, or at least you could watch them on the network. YouTube. But it was Rhea Ripley taking on Caden Carter. I have a picture of Caden Carter, too. And she is way too young for me. In fact, it was funny because you know, I told a friend that I'm probably old enough your dad or something. So, yeah. No, that's that's Jesse. Me. Yeah. Where is she? Somewhere. Watches. There she is. I think she's also she also plays like the role of timekeeper. Because there was a woman that looked just like her. I mean, you can tell I look so confused. It's terrible. I think she was like the timekeeper last time. I think she's I think she injured herself. She's like being timekeeper all now. Hey, at least she's active. And she took on Rhea Ripley. Not much of a match. Uh, Rhea Ripley is just stronger uh, than Kaden. Kaden does that one great move. It's like a springboard jump up move. It's a rope walking, drop down, jump up, arm drag. Kind of cool. So she got her spots, and uh, Rhea Ripley is just way too strong. Overpower her, hit the riptide. It was it was a good match. It was short. I don't know. It, it just something that didn't click there. It's a ham sandwich. Probably because it was just short. Then we had a fun match. Oh, the crowd. Died, though. I think the Rhea Ripley match they killed everyone. But it was uh, Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan versus uh, Even Rise or Team 3.0 if you've ever seen Chikara Wrestling. Because it danced off. Ho. Ho. Maka laka, maka laka. Woo. -hoo. I don't know. That's them trying to do the mockery. That was a great match. The dance off between 3.0 and El Generico versus the. Osiris Portal. Yes. Yeah, because it was Ophidian. The Serpent Guy. And someone else sometimes. But it was the Osiris Portal. That was that's cool. They actually took on the Briscoes. That was a fun match, too. But they used to do like the crazy stuff. They did the, the most illegal move in wrestling, which is hypnosis. And then they had the dance-off in the King of Trios. I think King of Trios is coming on soon. I'll be, I think they already had a King of Trios match, too. To see if, because it was Scott Steiner, Petey Williams, and Jordan Grace was on one team. Bro, I don't even care who they were against. It was Scott Steiner. That's all I needed to hear. We'll get back to Scott Steiner soon, too. Because NXT, shame on But this match was fun, though. Um, again, the double team between Burke and Lorcan was fun. Um, they're very much very striking wrestlers. Uh, ever uh, 3.0, they want to be the French team in the history of the fabulous Rigo brothers. Oh, who was the other? Uh, the Quebecers. I don't know. And the French people. I forget what their name was in NXT. They just used to feud with, with Enzo and Big Cass. I think it was like a hair versus hair match. They dumped like a bucket of nair on his head or something. I forget their name, though. It wasn't the Rougeaus. It wasn't the Quebecers. It was, I don't know, something. I'll, I'll look it up later. But those European uppercuts by, by Lorcan and Burke, you can interchange that. Those look amazing. They just look like it hurts. I, a chop from Oni Lorcan. He just, he just looks like he puts all... I didn't realize this. That between the two of them, they only weigh 380 pounds. 
380 divided by 2 is one, they're like 190 each? Wow, that's kind of small. I know there's the one tag team in the AEW that weighs like 350 pounds, I think. I know Jungle Boy and Marco Stunt. Jeez, they might be in the 200 something. I think between the three of them, it might be 400. Yeah, that would make sense because Lucha Shorts is probably upwards of 200. Marco Stunt's 120. Jungle Boy, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say 140. Wow. There are some tag teams that weigh more than. There are some wrestlers that weigh more than those that those three do. Wow. Um, eventually, um, 3.0 gets gets to beat up Lorcan for a little bit. Uh, then Bruce has a hot tag. They do their finisher. It is like a pick up DDT. That's cool. Um, again, the crowd just died, and for some reason, when the crowd dies, it just brings on the whole match. It's a ham sandwich of a match. For some reason, this was the match of the night, and this actually could have been... I know why they had the main event. They could have actually had this as next week's main event, or a real showcase spotlight. It was Cameron Grimes versus Raul Mendoza! And Raul Mendoza is such a workhorse in NXT. He has to be on a WWE Royal Rumble, eventually. He can be... It doesn't matter what number. He could be number seven. Go in there, do one flip, and get tossed by some big guy. As long as Raul Mendoza is in the Royal Rumble, this guy is happy. They could even put him in the um, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. That would be good, too. He has to get somehow, by hook or by crook, onto the main roster, though. I know Humberto Carrero is just an amazingly handsome guy. Uh, his cousin, there's a fly there, his, uh, Angel Garza again. Charisma. He's so there. Those two are so good. Raul Mendoza really started everything, and I think I've been on the run Raul Mendoza choo choo train for I think two years. Ever since I first saw him, and he was doing flippy stuff, and I'm like, yes, yes. It was Raul Mendoza versus Roderick Strong. It was a face versus face match. It was utterly amazing. Again, you can go back into my video library and just check it out, but. Amazing match again. I think that was like a play minion match. That was like an opening match. I might have even said I might have said it was a surf and turf match only because it was the first match. Probably looking back at it, probably was amazing. But this was a great match, though. I mean, oh, so good. Uh, Cameron Grimes tries to finish him off. Raul Mendoza smart though, which is good because if they job Raul Mendoza out quickly, I will not be happy. This is a match. Breathe. Really good counter wrestling by Raul Mendoza. So fun. Again, he can do the springboard into a headlock takedown. I didn't even know you could do that. Uh, Cameron Grimes, again, the more brawler, technical type, though. Still does a good technical wrestling. Again, great amount of wrestling. Uh, Cameron Grimes does have some nasty submissions, which is pretty cool. Uh, not as nasty as the food you are armbar of, obviously, Matt, Matt Riddle. But he did a version of something. It looked awesome, though. And the uh, springboard drop kicks, awesome. The avalanche, Fran the Frankenstein, when both of them are on the top rope. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Uh, Kevin Grimes eventually does get the, the running double stomp. Hey, I don't mind if it's going to be this. If he has to beat it, Ron Mendoza to finally get that double stomp, I'm fine with that. This was a surf and turf quality match. And then the main event of an evening, and I have to write this on the back because that was my last note page, so I have to kind of read it here. Kind of away from the life on just Claire's. It was Kushida and some mystery partners. Indeed. Versus Imperium. And Imperium was Marcel Barcel, Alexander Wolf, and Fabian Eichner. And for a second, I got excited because I heard the sirens going off, and I'm like, Scott Steiner's back! Scott Steiner. Oh, it's 
Breezango. Which is good, though. It's a good explosion for them. Um, I was kind of hoping... And this may, may be semi-racist, but... I was kind of hoping Kushida would have teamed up with... Crap, I forget his name now. Not... I forget now. He's on 205 Live. But oh, what's his face? Or, you know, I've been really made a good big pop. You bring back Tach Taka Michinoku and uh, some other guy from Kai and Tai. That would have been, been amazing. And I'll think of his name probably at the, like, the last minute. Not Takuchi. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Kenta left. I can't, for the life of me, think of his name. And he just wrestled on 205. Shoot. I'm going bad. Again, you can always leave a comment saying, you stupid fat bastard. Scott Steiner needs to teach you some math because you obviously don't know what you're talking about. He needs to teach you some wrestling, too. Um, the sirens go off. I was hoping Scott Steiner... No, Breezango showed up. Um, Imperium kind of dominated. Very typical European style. Classic stuff. Uh, Bizango, of course, is a little bit more flamboyant. She does just fun to watch. Uh, and then it's kind of classic. More, more is just more killed the smash though. I know he's trying, but he's trying way too hard. He has to bring it down a little bit. He, he's at an eleven. He has he has to bring it down to five. That's what his eleven is. Again, she eventually cleans up. He wins by Alligator Clutch. Just fun. Um, rest of Imperium is kind of upset. He sneaks out of the ring. So there we go. So that's why. With that out of sync. Probably I know why. Because it's an old. But yep, that was NXT Live though. Not, not a bad show. Oh, that uh, Kushida match. Again, it kind of got bumped. But the Kushida match was fun, though. It was a cheeseburger match. It's not bad. I don't know. It just felt like a ham sandwich of a show. And then on Thursday, I have off, and then Friday's going to be my last Red Wine and Impact Friday. Because that will be a Red Wine and Pizza Smackdown next week. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Thank you for putting up with, with technical issues. And, again, if you like what you see, you can always like, comment, subscribe. I think the next show live I'm going to is October 19th. My sister's already bugging me about it. So that's in about three more weeks. So, well, we'll see on stuff, because the 17th, that, next weekend I have that. I don't know, we'll see. And thank you guys for watching. Have a good night. Bye.